So this week's reading talks about us being a holy priesthood. As a Baptist church, we hold dearly to the idea of priesthood of all believers. And we usually understand that as meaning that everybody has a part to play. Our church isn't just about what the minister does. But let's unpack that a bit more. What is a priest? Well, a priest is a mediator, someone who mediates between people and God. They approach God on behalf of the people, bringing offerings or sacrifices, petitioning God on behalf of the people. And they also mediate God to the people. We might think of uh, a Catholic priest offering absolution, assuring people of their forgiveness when they've made confession. In the Old and New Testaments, we see priests as those who could approach God, but then only very carefully and only once a year could the high priest approach God in the Holy of Holies, the very most innermost part of the temple, where the Ark of the Covenant was and where God's presence dwelt. So even as God's chosen people with whom he had made a covenant to be their God, even they could not approach God directly. God is holy and they were not. Nobody could look at God without dying, except Moses, remember. Remember how the people couldn't even look at Moses' face after Moses had been talking with God. He had to put a veil over it because it reflected God's glory so much. So priests were necessary in protecting the people from God, helping the people maintain their purity. So much of the Jewish law centred around cleanliness, purity and holiness, ways to deal with the people's sin so that they could be in relationship with God. But we know how this all got corrupted. And people thought that if they went through the motions and kept the laws, made the offer sacrifices, then they were okay with God. When in fact their hearts and their lifestyle and their treatment of others was far from God. We read about this in the prophets in Amos chapter 5. God says, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to you. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. And the prophet Micah asked the question, what shall I, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted Lord? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The sacrifices, the offerings, the singing, the music were all empty and repulsive even to God if the people's hearts were wrong, if their actions were unjust, if they weren't merciful if they weren't humble before God. It's the age old problem of sin, isn't it? How whenever man is involved, there's a very good chance he will corrupt the good ideas and the good systems. But there is good news. There is very good news. Jesus Christ is the very good news. Because Jesus Christ has dealt with sin once and for all. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself as the perfect sacrifice. We usually understand that word perfect to mean faultless, without blemish. And of course, for a lamb to be sacrificed, it had to be perfect and without blemish. But of course, the word perfect also means complete and finished. There is no need anymore for human priests to stand between God and man, between man and God. Jesus 
has become the mediator. He has bridged the gap. And having dealt with sin, we are able to draw near to God, right into the Holy of Holies, right into the presence of God, because what of what Jesus has done for us. Hebrews 6 tells us this. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Well, we have these images in popular culture, don't we, of people turning up at the gates of heaven and St. Peter meeting them uh, with the book to see if they're in or out, the vetting to see if they may come in or out. Or you know the reputation that doctors receptionists have at the surgery who seem to be on a mission sometimes to keep people from seeing the doctor. Well, that's not the sort of mediator, mediator that Jesus is. Jesus is not standing as a barrier between us and God, but a gateway. Jesus is now high priest, the intermediary between us and God. But because Jesus has dealt with sin once and for all, remember when he died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. Jesus has ripped apart the barrier between God and us. So Jesus doesn't stand as a barrier to protect us from God or keep us from God, but as a gateway to welcome us into God's presence. So through Jesus, through our faith in him, because of what he's done, we can approach God with confidence. As Hebrews 4 tells us, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That last verse is stunning, isn't it? Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence. That's almighty God, creator of the universe. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This grace and mercy is not to be taken lightly. It was brought at a great price. We approach humbly, aware of our brokenness, aware of our sin, but confident because of what Jesus has done, that we are forgiven, we are washed clean, we are made right with God and can approach his throne. Come to him as our father, our Abba even, our daddy. We will find mercy, not judgment, because of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't it blow your mind? There might be folk listening who are fearful, who hang back from approaching God. But there is no need. Jesus has dealt with sin. All you need to do is be honest and admit your fault and take the forgiveness. Take the washing. Believe your son, sin is done with. It's forgiven and forgotten by God. And then come, put in your faith in Jesus, believing in him. Come to him who made you, to him who loves you, who seeks and saves you. Come. Well, it's a wonderful thing that Jesus is our priest. But what about these verses that say that we are a priesthood? We're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. What does this mean that we are priests? Well, we often use that phrase priesthood of all believers to describe the reality that we are all part of the body of Christ. 
that we all have a part to play in serving one another as we work towards our goal of being the fullness of Christ, all of Christ to this community. But there is really another dimension that perhaps we ignore. As priests, we are bridge builders between people and God, each one of us. The priesthood of all believers is not just about how we serve each other in the church. It's also about how we take God to other people, to the people in all of our life, in our home, in our leisure, in our workplace, in our neighbourhood. I like the way Dan Jessen describes a priest as someone who brings organisations, corporations, people, problems and opportunities to God, lifting them up in intercession and prayer. But the priest also brings God's perspective and grace to people and places. Priests touch God on behalf of people and places and they touch people and places on behalf of God. So being a priest involves prayer, taking people and places and situations, their needs to God, but also bringing God's perspective and grace to people, places and situations. How do we do that? By taking all that we know of God and bringing it to people, and that we are part of their lives. It's by our character as we become more Christ-like as we show those gifts of the Spirit, as we're filled with peace and joy, love, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, as we're forgiving people, gracious people, joyful people. By our actions that come out of that character and out of our obedience to what God asks us to do in his word, and by our words, how we speak, as well as what we say. But not just being there as a reflection of Christ in a passive way, but being active, being proactive. So when there is a problem at home or work or in an organisation you're part of, or even as a customer of a business, how can you bring God's perspective and grace to that situation and the people involved? How can you share God's wisdom and truth? You don't have to say the Bible says, but just share the wisdom, the attitude, encourage in a different way that comes from you knowing God and knowing and experiencing his love and grace. It makes us able to be people of grace and mercy and love towards others. For example, when you're with friends and someone's being ripped to shreds, stand up for them. When there's gossip, suggest that might not be the whole story. Don't get involved. When decisions are being made that are unfair or systems are unjust, speak up. And of course, let us remember to be a gateway ourselves for individuals to encounter God. Talk about our experience. Just be open about what we know of God, how we understand him, why we come to church, or just the fact we've been to church on Sunday. Talk as openly about God as any other part of our life. You might offer to pray for somebody, not necessarily with them, that might be too much, but they might be open to that. But ask if you could pray for them. Encourage people to pray for themselves try God out, to call out to him. Invite people to church, read the Bible with someone or give them a Bible. Encourage them to look at it themselves or give them a helpful book. Be sensitive, but be bold. Pray for discernment. But people are often much more open than we imagine. There is much that we can do in our individual lives. But as a church too, I wonder how can we build bridges and be a gateway rather than a barrier? Just as people have all sorts of wrong understandings about God, they also have all sorts of wrong understandings about church and that can be a barrier rather than a gateway to God. So how can we as a gathered people 
ensure that we are changing that perspective and changing how we do things as well, so that we're not a barrier or a stumbling block, but a welcoming invitation to taste and see that the Lord is good, a gateway to goodness and mercy, a gateway to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you can think now of a person or a situation which you can bring to the Lord in prayer. And um, perhaps there's a person or a situation where you can bring God's perspective and grace. So let's pray now. I'll give some space for you to bring those prayers to the Lord yourself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice for us that has made a way for us to be forgiven, for us to be clean, for us to be acceptable in God's sight. Lord, we come to you now and we offer our confession. We bring to you the things that we have done that may have hurt God or others words, thoughts or deeds. And we ask your forgiveness, for we are truly sorry. And Lord, we praise you that you promise to forgive all who are truly sorry. And Lord, now we bring to you people and situations, places, difficulties, we bring to you all those that are known to us in the silence. Pause the video if you want to pray longer. And Lord, also, let us just reflect on people and situations that we might know of. Some of the things we've been praying for, perhaps. Lord, show us now as we reflect how we might bring your grace and mercy, your love and healing, your presence to those people and situations. Give us wisdom and courage. Let's sit quietly and hear what the Lord has to say. Pause the video if you want to pray for longer. Father God, we thank you that you are always listening to our prayers and to our hearts. Lord, we pray for the filling of our hearts by your Holy Spirit anew. Fill us anew, we pray. Make us more like Jesus, full of love and compassion, full of courage and truth, that we may bring your love, your grace, your mercy, your truth to those around us, but Lord, most of all, we pray that you would help us be gateways to your goodness and gateways to you. Help us point people towards Jesus. We pray in his precious name. Amen. Well, we finish with a song reminding us that God is not just our God on a Sunday or when we gather for worship or when we Sit quietly at home and pray and read, but God of all our days, be the God of all my Sundays.